Welcome to another edition of Lean Bites. Hey, thanks for joining me today. My name is Paul Dean. In today's edition of Lean Bites, I'd like to share my insights into how simple but powerful is scientific thinking and what it could look like in your organization leading you to a successful improvement culture. Now, I don't profess to be a Toyota expert, but I believe that Toyota have developed it into a core principle that has led them to a successful improvement culture. Now, there's a couple of people that I believe have a really good handle on this topic, Mike Rother and Jeffrey Leiker, and I highly recommend reviewing what they've said on this topic. So, firstly, allow me to try and explain what scientific thinking isn't. It's not unique to Albert Einstein, or even Sheldon Cooper, for that matter but something that everyone can participate in regardless of their skill or education or ability. And I'm not talking about rocket science here, but a fundamental way of thinking that not only engages people in every part of your organization, but produces sustainable improvement results. So I hear you asking, how can I apply this principle in my business to help me on this so-called successful improvement culture? Well, I've developed five tips over the years that I believe will help you. Number one, prioritize problem solving. Make this part of everyday life, not a bolt-on approach. Equip team members to be problem solvers through training, coaching, and applying what they've learned as they go about their day-to-day -day tasks. Create an environment where it's okay to test and experiment. Now, there must be a psychologically safe environment to enable this, where your people can raise ideas without the fear of speaking up. Number two, as leaders, be responsive. If you're empowering your people to solve problems as they go about their day-to-day -day tasks, then help them with prompt support. Now, when a team member identifies a problem and calls for help, it's important that as a leader, I'm responsive and meet them at the gamba to discuss it as soon as possible. This then creates some urgency to the problem, like in Toyota's and on principle. I don't ask what's the problem, but I start with how can I help? This then leads to a conversation about the issue. And it's very important that I'm not dismissive, but I listen to the team member's explanation. Three, respectful challenge. I then respectfully challenge the theory that's based on their evidence. Now, respectful challenge is where we debate the merit of the evidence, never the person who gathers it. Scientific thinking is meant to be slow and systematic, not jumping to conclusions. If it's a high risk situation, then naturally we have to act fast. Otherwise, it gets us to think well before we do anything at all. Now, my questions are meant to get them to think about their theory on what's happening. Obviously, this is done in such a time frame that doesn't cause the problem to get bigger. I don't dismiss their findings because it's based on their observations and their assessments. And I'm careful from the onset not to tell them what I think or impose on them my opinions. And Toyota have created an environment where team members can further test their theories against the available evidence by undertaking experiments. This avoids jumping to conclusions, but also allows them to gather more evidence to support or disprove their theory. Number four, what's the action? If then the team member has settled on root cause, it's time for action. Typically, while standing next to a leader, some team members will ask, hey, what should we do now? I always respond with, what should you do? And I love the approach that Toyota takes by using the term countermeasure rather than the term solution. And I think they discovered long ago that the answer to a problem may not be the final answer. So to avoid searching for the final answer and be drawn into thinking the problem is totally solved, it's a countermeasure. Five, monitor the results. Now, since the team member has implemented or facilitated the implementation of this countermeasure, a key part is how do we know if it was successful? Allow them to follow up and check the outcome to determine if the action has been effective. Empower them to arrive at a conclusion that is partially or fully worked. 
and follow this through by having the team member present their findings and their learnings to others. Have them present the findings not only to the other teams, but also to senior leaders. And I've seen many times a significant benefit to the team member when they share their problem solving experiences with the leadership team. Obviously, coach and support them. Setting them up for success will encourage others to participate in on this sharing. Now, remember, scientific thinking is not just for leaders, but for everyone. And I'm confident if you apply these tips, that will help you to be on the pathway to success. I hope this has been very helpful. And before I let you go, I'd like to leave you with a quote from Jeffrey Leiker's book, Tie It Away. Jumping to conclusions based on something we thought worked well in the past is fast thinking. Scientific thinking is based on slow thinking, which is slow, deliberate, and systematic. Thanks for joining me on this edition of Lean Bites.